Hello, this is Coach Wilson, and this is Unit 2, Day 6. Today I'd like for you to answer the question, what problems are left in our country following the Revolutionary War? What groups of people have been affected by all of this war that's been going on, so, you know, everything that's been going on in our country? And then what do you think will change and what will remain the same with these groups of people that you've listed? All right, so there's various various groups of people I want you to try to think about. I want you to come up with those groups on your own. I don't want to give them to you. But if you're struggling a little bit with the journal, uh, today's set of notes should kind of give you a little clear understanding. Today we're going to be talking about things beyond the revolution. So things outside of the war, all the good things that we talk about, and kind of get into some of those things that are going on underlying uh, in our country during the war. So our central question, what other groups of people were affected in the colonies by the Revolutionary War? And the first group we're going to talk about are loyalists and minorities. Okay, so when we say minorities, I don't mean minorities uh, from a racial standpoint. I mean minorities in like groups of people that uh, whether it's religious groups or maybe it is, you know, specific minorities in regards to race, but those who are in the minority as far as beliefs towards what the country should be doing. Roughly about a third of all citizens in the colonies remained loyal to England during this time. Uh, some of their reasons for loyalty was that they thought England was going to win the war. Many of these people were also out in the country and were just isolated from all of this revolutionary spirit and still maintained all of their loyalty to England because that's where they were from. They were English citizens in their minds. And then many who remained loyal were also financially invested. All right, and we've already kind of talked about loyalists a little bit, but just want to reiterate that. Things that also went on during this time is many groups were forced to leave um, or shut down during this time, uh, whether it's financially or spiritually. Uh, specifically, religious groups struggled, um, such as the Quakers who were... Uh, very pacifist or were considered pacifist and they did not believe in violence or you know fighting this was also the group that did not support slavery so obviously they've got some built up tension from southerners already but you're going to see that tension grow even more during this time uh, many people who were financially invested in england loyal to england or just religiously were struggling here fled back to england and some fled to canada in order to find refuge and you're going to see that continue kind of towards the end of the period. All right, so the war on slavery. First of all, nearly a third of all slaves had defected to England, and I'm going to go ahead and put these on here so you can see them all. Uh, nearly a third of all slaves had defected to England during this time. Um, the one reason that England was so big in pushing this is that it hurt the Southern War effort. Uh, if you think about losing a, what is a large portion of their slave labor, uh, some African Americans also rose up during this time of hearing about revolution that it was hard for even them being at this time not able to read and, you know, not having a lot of formal education. They still were caught up in a lot of the revolutionary spirit and many of them rose up against their slave owners. Uh, one specifically that we talk about is Thomas Jeremiah, who uh, he was actually a free African American and he executed this uh, he was executed for trying to create this plan to get all of these slaves together and form a rebellion. Uh, southern states reinforced their white superiority during this time um, and backed slavery. And for a lot of that had to do with more about they believed it was the economy, and it's kind of ironic. Um, the reason that they believed that they needed to keep slavery was because if slavery disappeared, then it was possible that they may have to institute some form of uh, white, not you know, why not white slavery, but putting white people into the fields and doing the same jobs that African Americans were doing and basically taking away from white freedom. So it's just this very ironic situation, uh, at least their reasoning behind it. And then in the North, you have this very revolutionary idea of, you know, we need to get rid of slavery and that and this evangelical Christian um, influence is going to spread across slavery into these very anti-slavery ideals and you're going to start to see some of the uh, i wanted to, i guess you call it lines drawn in the sand so to speak between the north and the south over slavery starting kind of during the end of the revolution now native americans were also involved heavily in the american revolution uh, we've talked about the iroquois native americans a little bit and how they were very neutral in the french and indian war and tried to stay out of the war and then during the American Revolution had tried to step in and attack white settlers and um, fight alongside the British. And a lot of that had to do with that the Native Americans, uh, they felt really fearful that the English had tried to protect their lands and tried to be good to them. And they were afraid that you're going to take a trustworthy ruling group and replace that group with a hostile one if this group is able to win the war. Um, so you get, you know, some tribes are trying to stay out of the war. Some are fighting because they're fearful. 
you had in North Carolina and around this, uh, the state where we live, uh, the Cherokee led attacks on the Patriots in 1776. Um, Militia ended up ravaging Cherokee tribes during this time and even forced them to sign treaties which gave up more of their land. Uh, the Iroquois in the north and west, as we talked about, they were very influential in fighting against um, those people in New York and the New England areas. And they're going to decimate some of the crops and whatnot through those areas, but they're also going to take huge losses as well. But they're not going to stop fighting. Uh, by the end of the war, um, the fact that the colonists had won the war meant a demand for Western lands by whites, and they're going to treat the Native Americans even worse because they're going to see them as a conquered people along with the British that they beat in the war. Now, coming to one of our final uh, two topics of the day is we're going to talk about women during the war. Hey, and men went off to the war, left women in charge of the farms and businesses. And in regards to women's rights during this time, you're going to see in any time we talk about a war that women's rights take a step forward because men leave the home and leave no one there but the women in charge. And so therefore the women step up and take a different role than they've had when the men were there. And that's going to continue throughout history. And we'll talk about that on into um, our different units. Women are trying to run the home and the farm and the businesses, and some of them are very inexperienced. Some are handling these farms and businesses with ease and are having no problems at all. But one of the things that they're all struggling with is that there is a war going on around them, and there's a lack of labor uh, with all these men going off to war. There's no one to work in some of these farms and some of these businesses, and so therefore they struggle. So then we get to women in the war effort. Many of these women actually joined the army and worked as cooks and nurses. Some even disguised themselves to fight and fight alongside the men in the war. And this was not necessarily the norm, but it did happen. And you're going to see even some of these women who are not trying to fight against the British or trying to fight in the war, they're going to get caught up in it anyways uh, inside the just fact that they're in the middle of a war. Now, the economy is going to change a lot during this time period. You're going to see, uh, especially the American economy, take a new structure. And American commerce certainly finds itself independent of England. We've won the war. We call it we, but the United States is, or the colonies have won the war. They've defeated their foe and, and declared their independence. And now they've kind of they're able to kind of start going on their own ventures and starting to open up their own trade routes so merchants in new england began trying to create these new networks in the caribbean and south america you're going to see them also try to develop a trade with asia and then you're also going to see trade increasing among the states where they're going to start trying to work together more and that's something that building up to the war was a struggle in the colonies is that the states never really could work together and could never get their trade systems together and the constitution and the government forming in the next 10 15 years is going to help tremendously with that but it's going to take a lot of time for that to kind of develop england also is going to try to close off ports to american trade and try to make it to where you know they in their minds starve out the american economy the problem was America had all the goods, and if they could figure out how to manufacture those goods, they already had the raw materials. They didn't need England other than the manufacturing, and so that's going to be the step forward that the American economy is going to have to continue to take to progress forward. But in trying to close off American trade from England, it actually only strengthened the American eco uh, economy and American economic independence throughout the next 20 to 30 years. All right? So here are your questions for today. Make sure you answer all four of these. Uh, if you do have any problems, please let me know. And remember to get your vocabulary down today. And we will be continuing on with day seven next time. If you have any questions, please let me know. If not, I'll talk to you soon.